my name is uh, Osna Sajsta. I'm a Norwegian writer. And my two last books are about radicalization. The first one is about Anders Bering Breivik and his massacre on Norwegian youth in 2011. And my last book is about two sisters of Norwegian Somali descent who went to Syria, was radicalized here in Norway, and who went to Syria to join the Islamic State. There are a set of reasons why people get radicalized. Uh, and uh, one reason is identity and looking for something, looking for meaning, looking for a place to belong, looking for a meaningful life. And jihad gives a direction. Jihad could, you know, it has a certain set of rules, framework, you know, whenever you should pray, how you should dress, how you should behave, what you should read. Another part is the protest, protest against the West, protest against, uh, you know, corrupt go government, protest against uh, parents, against schools, against everything you might have failed with. Mm. There, there are many things that unite uh, on the spraying Breivik's ideology and the ideology of ISIS. Like for the Islamic State, it's not particularly ethnic Norwegians or Europeans that are the enemy. It's the traitors, which are Muslims that are not extreme, you know, moderate Muslims, or worse, Shia Muslims, or Yazidis. Uh, they will be killed off first, finish with them, and then the Christians they will try to convert. So it's, it's very similar in, in who they go for. So being a moderate Muslim in the West, uh, you are a prime, prime target. Humiliation is a very important factor, feeling of being humiliated. Uh, and uh, it could be, you know, personal humiliation, uh, as it often is. Uh, if you look for that too, you'll find it every in every corner of your life. You know, all of us would find that. But, mm -hmm. but it could be, you know, more direct than that. But it's also the humiliation you feel when you see uh, your fellow Muslims are being killed, you know, in Iraq or in Syria. So it's, it's a protest against that uh, to fight back. Uh, and um, in the case of two sisters, uh, the main reason, you know, they have all of these reasons, but they also have something else, which is a very strong religious awakening. It's a very strong sense of Islam being what should rule life. And it's a step-by-step -step radicalization. It took them two, three years to, to, to be on the, the threshold of Syria and, and passing over to Syria. Um, and um, what can unite uh, that religious awakening, the most important thing in, in it is the belief that this life is not the real life. Real life is what comes after, it's paradise or hell. So however you live in this life, which is just a test, it's not you know, the real thing. You, whatever you do, it just get, getting gaining points to get a good place in paradise or a less good place in hell. It's important to think and know that those who go to Syria, they think they're doing the good thing. They think they're doing the right thing. Because what can be better than God's state on earth? Uh, many of those people going did not have uh, you know, figures uh, really seeing them. I mean, I'm not blaming the parents here, but most of those who go uh, had parents who had other things to do or, you know, they were or couldn't control their kids, you know, single mothers, lots of single mothers who, you know, were in dire, dire straits, were in different situations. And, and the thing is, like, if you look for reasons to hate the West, you can fill up your bag full, you know, it's, it's not a problem. Same, even Bravey can say, you know, on the spare, Bravey can also say, you know, I filled up my bag with all the... Uh, things committed by Muslims in the West. And he can also fill up his bag, and that's a problem. So it, it's like we have to try to find um, you know, a common ground uh, because those two extreme sides are feeding off each other uh, and they nurture each other. This is searching for a uh, meaning, but it's also searching for a brotherhood or a sisterhood, a place to belong. There's a lot we can do, and my recipe for anti-radicalization work is actually the same recipe as you have to make a good society. Um, we have to focus on children, on youth. We have to invest in children and youth because this is happening on so early stages. You know, already in you know the the primary school, you'll have 
those ideas settle that we are different. We are suppressed. They suppress us. We, you know, we have to fight back. In the Netherlands, for instance, who've come further than we have, uh, I've read that they have their recipes, you know, social workers, youth workers, like invest in the pattern of society. And, and uh, I think that is um, young people want to be seen and they need to be seen.